Hello and welcome to the pilot episode of Further Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr. Sun. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be looking at the geometrical arrangement of three planes. And I'm just going to start uh, by talking briefly about what the possible arrangements of those three planes could be. Uh, so first off is uh, we have three planes that meet at a single point, uh, as you can see in the picture there. Uh, second option is that the three planes all meet, but rather than meeting at a single point, they meet along a line, uh, which is known as a sheaf. Um, so in this case, rather than having a single unique solution, there would in fact be an infinite number of solutions for the intersection of those three planes. Uh, next option is the three planes form a prism. Uh, so each plane intersects the other two, but all three never intersect each other at all. Uh, and the uh, one other type is if uh, two or indeed more of the planes are parallel with each other. Um, and there is a fifth type, which is in fact, if two or more of the planes are, are actually the same plane. Um, but we'll talk about that as I go through um, the example. Uh, this example is taken from the Pearson Edexcel textbook uh, and the slides are uh, taken from the legendary uh, Dr. Frost maths. Uh, so what we have here is a system of equations uh, with um, a value k um, and what I'm going to do is just go through four different values of k um, what the arrangements um, of those three planes would be. Um, so here we have uh, the scenario, first scenario where k equals zero. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to jot down um, what those equations would be um, in the situation that k equals zero. So the first one uh, would be 3x minus 6z equals zero. Uh, the second one would be 3y plus 3z equals two. Uh, and the third one, um, okay, does not appear in the third one, so that is going to remain as uh, negative 3x minus y plus 3z equals negative two. Uh, now, the first thing I want to check about these equations is are any of them uh, multiples of each other or do any of them have the same coefficients for X, Y and Z? Um, and in this case, they don't, um, which means that none of these planes are parallel with each other. Um, so I need to go um, and explore whether they have um, a unique solution or um, a different solutions. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is to write this in matrix form. So the matrix would go 3, 0, negative 6, uh, 0, 3, 3, and negative 3, negative 1, 3. That matrix would be multiplied by x, y, z, uh, and would give us the answer 0, 2, negative 2. Uh, and I'm going to call this matrix uh, the matrix M. Um, now, uh, what I need to do is I need to evaluate the um, determinant of M. Um, and I'm going to do that. I've got that uh, preloaded on my uh, ClassWiz calculator. Uh, so I'm just going to go to get that. Uh, and the determinant of M comes out as negative 18. Now, the fact that this determinant is not zero means that this matrix M can be inversed uh, and we can use that inverse matrix to solve this system of simultaneous equations and there will be one unique solution. Uh, so I could go ahead and write that X, Y, Z would be equal to M inverse multiplied by 0, 2, negative 2. Um, and I could do that on my um, class with calculator. I could put this in as uh, matrix A uh, and just then do the matrix uh, inverted multiplied by 0, 2, negative 2. Um, and I could just do that all in one go. So I'm just going to do that now. Uh, and it gives us the unique solution for X, Y, Z of uh, four thirds, zero and two thirds. So there is one point of intersection of those three planes, four thirds, zero, two thirds. Um, and if I just come out, of here, I could show you that graphically. 
which is here. So this is the um, this is set up for if K is zero and you can see there if I just move that round, that white dot is the unique point of intersection of those three planes. OK, moving on. Uh, so now we've got a new scenario. Uh, we've got a scenario where K equals one um, and we're going to investigate what happens here. So uh, as before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out what the system of equations would be in the case when K equals one. Uh, so that would be three X minus Y minus six Z equals one. X plus three Y plus three Z equals two and negative three X minus Y plus three Z equals negative two. Um, and again, I just want to inspect these equations to see if any of them have the same coefficients of X, Y and Z, uh, which they don't. Um, I then need to see if any of them are multiples of each other, uh, which they aren't, um, which means that none of the planes are parallel and none of them are the same plane. Um, therefore, I need to go ahead and um, investigate whether there's a unique point of intersection. So I'll write that out as a matrix. So it would be three, negative one, negative six, one, three, three and negative three, negative one, three. And when we multiply that by X, Y, Z. We get the solution one, two, negative. Two. Now I'm going to call this matrix the matrix M and use my class with to calculate the determinant of M and it comes out as zero. Now, the fact that the determinant comes out as zero means that you, there is no inverse for this matrix, which means that there is not a unique solution. It doesn't necessarily mean there are no solutions. Um, what I have to do now, though, is uh, do some further investigation. This, this matrix approach is no longer any use to me. Uh, I need to go old school uh, and try and solve these three simultaneous equations manually uh, and see what happens with those uh, results. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to rewrite them over here. And I'm going to just label those equations uh, one, two and three. Now what I'm looking to do here is to eliminate one of the unknowns and I need to try to eliminate the same unknown from um, the equations each time I do this. So the first thing I've noticed is I've got the same coefficient of Z in equations two and three. So I'm going to do equation two minus equation three. Uh, that's going to give me four X plus four Y. Z will be eliminated and that's going to equal four. Uh, so what I now need to do is choose a different pair of equations and try to eliminate Z um, from that pair of equations as well. Um, and I'm going to do that by doing equation one plus two lots of equation two. So equation one plus two lots of equation two, that's going to give me five X. Uh, this plus two lots of this is going to give me plus five Y. Negative six Z plus two lots of three Z is going to cancel out and one plus two lots of two is going to give me five. Now what you should notice about these two equations is that they are both uh, multiples of each other. They would both in fact simplify down to X plus Y equals one. Now the fact that they are the same equation, uh, we say that that means that they are consistent. And these equations would have infinitely many solutions. Now, if these two equations have infinitely many solutions, that tells us that the original system also has infinitely many solutions. So what that would mean is that the three planes would form a sheaf, uh, a line where all three intersect. Um, and I can show you again on autograph what that looks like in the situation where K equals one. You could see that there's the three planes and that line that I've highlighted yellow there uh, is the sheaf. So we have an infinite number of solutions between those three planes uh, forming that line of sheaf. OK, one final scenario here then. Final scenario is that K equals negative six. So we're going to investigate what happens under those conditions there. 
So if k equals negative 6, the equations become 3x plus 6y minus 6z equals negative 6. Second equation becomes negative 6x plus 3y plus 3z equals 2. And third equation becomes negative 3x minus y plus 3z equals negative 2. OK, again, same process. Do any of the equations have the same coefficients for x, y and z? No, they don't. Uh, so none of them are parallel. Uh, do any of the equation, are any of the equations multiples of each other? No, they're not. So we don't have any um, uh, pairs of planes. Um, so we're going to go ahead with the matrix method. So I'll write that out here. 3, 6, negative 6. Negative 6, 3, 3. Negative 3, negative 1, 3 multiplied by x, y, z gives us negative 6, 2, negative 2. Uh, and again, I'm going to call this the matrix M. Uh, I'm going to first of all evaluate the determinant of M. And this one also comes out as 0, which again tells me that there's no unique solution uh, for this system of three planes. There isn't one single point where they all intersect. Uh, so again, I've got to go a little bit old school. I've got to try and solve those three equations using an elimination method and investigate what that leaves me with. So I'll just write them out again over here. OK. And again, I'll label those as equations one, two, and three. And as before, I'm looking to eliminate uh, a variable from a pair of equations. So let's start with uh, the same one we did before. If we do two minus three again, we're going to eliminate those z's. So we'll aim, we'll aim to eliminate z's here. So equation two minus equation three, negative six x, subtract negative three x, it's going to be negative three x. Three y, subtract negative y's positive 4y, 3z take away 3z is 0, and then 2 take away negative 2 is positive 4. Uh, I'll then do, uh, again, the same approach as I took on the previous one. Um, I'll do equation 1 plus two lots of equation 2, because again, that will eliminate the z term for me. So uh, 1 plus two lots of negative 6 is going to be negative 9x uh, 6y plus 2 lots of 3y is going to be plus 12y. Negative 6x plus 2 lots, sorry, negative 6z, I should say, plus 2 lots of 3z, 0. And then negative 6 plus 2 lots of uh, 2 uh, is going to be um, uh, negative 2. Now, what we have here is you will notice that this second equation, the coefficients for x and for y, are linear multiples of each other, both multiplying by three, but that doesn't then work for the numbers here. Um, so what you would find is if you drew these two lines out on a coordinate axis, those two lines would be parallel um, and there would be no um, solutions for this. So we call this inconsistent. It wasn't what was supposed to happen, bear with. Uh, so we call this inconsistent. And what that means is there are no solutions for these three planes intersecting. Uh, so this is the final possible outcome. Um, and this is that the three planes form a triangular prism. Uh, so none of them are parallel. Uh, we've established there's no unique solution. Because the equations are inconsistent, we've established that there are no solutions at all, uh, which means we've got a triangular prism. Um, and I can show you again, uh, on the graphing software. But there's your three planes when k equals negative six, and there you go, there you can see your triangular prism. So each plane is intersecting the other two, but they're never all intersecting each other at the same time. Uh, so there we go. Thank you very much for listening, uh, if indeed you still are.